we're going to, our topic today is comfort. Comfort. Because we're going to need to be comforted. We're going to be need to be, we're going to need to be comforted. And as I was just sharing before we went on video, I needed to be comforted. I needed to be comforted myself. Because Satan was trying to attack me. He's going to try, he's going to, try to attack you. I don't know how to, to emphasize that so clearly to you. He's going to try to attack you. So arm yourself likewise. He's going to, he's going to come after you wholeheartedly. He's going to come after, you with, come after you by trying to make you feel inadequate and insecure. Or he's going to come after you by putting something in front of you that you desire to get you to fall. To where you don't stay walking with the Lord. But he is going to come after you. He's going to do that. But you got to hold to Jesus. You have to hold to the Lord in them times, in them situations. You have to hold to the Lord because you on your own is no match for the devil. You're no match for the devil on your own. But with Jesus, you have all power to be able to control and deal with him. So let's turn to Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 through 13. Now I'm going to tell you this right here. Let's just let's read on first. Not that I speak in respect of want. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Which strengtheneth me. Now we're going to break this portion of scripture down. Because there's a lot here. There's a lot here. Now, if you're going to be comforted, I don't know if you all caught that or not. If you're going to be comforted, you're going to have to learn. You are going to have to learn how to be comforted. You're going to learn. And I'm going to tell you how you're going to learn to be comforted. For, because after you have gone through one problem after another problem, after you have gone through one problem after another problem, you come to realize that your comfort can only come from the Lord. You come to realize that because after you had one problem and then you went through another problem, you might have had, you might have had relationship problems. You might have had money problems. You might have had on-the-job problems. And you might have tried them in all other kinds of ways, in all other ways you might have tried. You might have really tried to do it your way, and you realize that doing it your way, you didn't get comforted. You stayed in misery. You stayed in misery. But when you tried the Lord, and the Lord that came by, and you realized that it was him that had brought you through everything, you realize that he brought you through it all. Because you tried so many different things along the way. But you have went through one problem after another problem after another problem. Then you come to realize that it was God, that you needed him, that you needed the Lord to bring you through. But you had to learn that. That's something that you had to learn. Now, I know somebody's going to need to rely on this. I know someone's going to need to rely on this. So I want you all to be focused. Settle down, settle in, because we're talking about something that's really, really deep. This is deep. This is deep. Satan will have you to where you feel like you are losing your mind. You understand me. Satan will have you to where you feel like you're losing your mind. 
So we're talking about some deep stuff here. Now, what I'm telling you is you have to learn. You have to learn how to be comforted. And you learn that by going through, by going through problems. You learn that. You learn that I had this problem right here. And you tried it other ways, and it didn't work out for you. Then you have had other problems, and you tried it other ways, and it didn't really work out for you. Then you come to the realization that you have to rely on the Lord, and that's how it's going to work out for you. You tried everything else. You tried everything, and it didn't work. Then you come to the realization that it's going to be the Lord that's going to comfort you. But that's by going through. You learn that. You learn. You learn. Through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God. Through it all, I have learned to depend upon God's word. You learn by going through. By going through, you learn. You say, you know what? And then the next time a situation happens, you want to know what you do? You say, well, you know what? I am not going through that situation again because I know who God is and I know he's my help. I know he's my help. But you had to learn that, though. You had to learn it. That's something that you had to learn. So, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, I learned that because I know that God is God. I know that Jesus is the same Jesus. Regardless of what situation I'm in, he's the same Jesus. He's the same Jesus. Whenever I was doing well, he was Jesus. And now that I'm, now that I'm not doing so well, he still is Jesus. He still has control over everything. He still has control over everything. So I know I could be content because just like, just like the one song says, trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. And then like the word of God says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You understand me? I know I could be content right here. You want to know why? Because I'm still connect. i still connected to Jesus. I'm still connected. So regardless of what's going on around me, I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to have to respond to that in desperate, in a desperate way. I'm not going to have to. Because I know who I serve. I know who I serve. And he's still God. He's still God. He hasn't been removed from being God. He's still God. So I've learned to be content and regardless of what situation I am in. I know I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know how to be high and I know how to be low. Everywhere in all things I am instructed. See, that's the thing right there. You see, being instructed. So, yes, he tells me whenever I'm low what to do. He tells me whenever I'm feeling good what to do. He tells me whenever I'm having financial issues what to do. He tells me whenever I'm having relationship can, uh, issues and concerns what to do. I'm instructed how to behave. I'm instructed on what to do. So I can be content because I serve the living God. I serve a living God. I serve a living God. And this is how I'm going to do it. Let's look at verse 13. This is how you do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Because he's still, even in my low state, he's still there with me. In my high state, he's there with me. He's going to bring me through. Only thing I got to do is remain content. Learn how to be content. Learn. I need to learn. I need to learn. I need to learn. There's a song that says, learning to lean. Learning to lean, learning to lean on G Jesus, finding more power than I ever dreamed. Learning to lean, that's what we have. I'm telling you, whenever you're going through situations, you better learn. You're going, you better learn how to lean or you're going to be in a world of hurt. And you learn how to lean by going through. By going through situations. You need a ladder. By going through situations. 
So that's how you learn, by going through situations. Then you come to that realization that this is God. This is God. I know this is God. I, I, God's going to help me through it. God's going to get me by. God's going to take me over this. God's going to put me in the place that I need to be. God's going to give me the person I need to be with for the rest of my life. God is going to give me the job that I need to get. God's going to bring me, God's going to teach me how to get along with this boss who I can't, I have trouble getting along with. God's going to teach me how to, going to teach me how to study and going to open up my mind so I can get better grades. God, it's going to be God. It's going to be God. It's going to be God. I can't emphasize it enough. It's not the things that are outside. It's going to be God that's going to get you to go through. It's going to be God. Amen. So we got to so we got to learn how to depend upon God. We got to learn how to be instructed. If you would turn to Matthew chapter 17 and verse 27. And I'm going to give you a little intro into this. They were supposed to pay tribute, give money. They're supposed to be going to give money, paying tribute. And I imagine that they must not have had any money based on what had happened in this portion of scripture. What ended up happening was Jesus had instructed. He instructed them to go. To go fish. To go fishing, the, and the fish that you pull up out of the water, look inside this fish's mouth, and then go give that for, go use that to pay for you and for me, the tribute, for you and for me. But see, that's how we are instructed. You're going to be instructed. That's just an example of how we are instructed. We're going to, give the, we're going to be given the word of what we need to do in the situation that we're in. We just got to hold still. We got to hold still and be instructed and do what the instructions tell us. And do the instructions. Carry out the instructions. Carry out the instruction. So if you're in a low state, find out what your instructions are for that low state of being. Find out what your instructions is. If you want this, if you want a certain thing to happen in your life, find out what the instructions are to having that, to achieving that. Find out what the instructions are. Because you're going to be given instructions. You're going to be instructed. You will be instructed. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 18. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We're going we're to pause right there. Having done all to stand, not to run away, not to run away, not to retreat, not to go, not to go and have and go worry and to doubt, but to stand, to stand, to stand, and not stand any old way. Because you, you hear what he said? He said, put on the whole armor of God. So you're going to stand in the armor of God. You're standing in his armor. Not just standing any old way, not standing out there naked, not standing out there worrying, but you're going to be standing in the full armor of God. Now, think about it. When do you put your armor on? You don't put your armor on when you're already in the battle. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pay attention. You don't put your full armor on whenever you're in the battle. You put that armor on before you go to battle. You put that armor on before you go to battle. So that means that you put, so that means you, you build a foundation of God. So when you get that problem, you're already in the armor. You're already in it. Amen. 
You understand me? You don't wait till you get the problem and try to put the armor on when they're shooting at you. You get that armor on already. You get the armor on and you keep it on. You don't show up ill prepared without your shield, without your helmet, without your sword. You show up to the battle ready, already dressed in your armor, ready to go. And I'm telling you all today, make sure you have your armor on. Because the devil's coming. He is coming. This is no joke. I told you he tried to come after me. He got me trying to question my faith. But I had to stand. Because I know if I stand on God, I can withstand him. He's going to try to blow. He's going to try to come at me. He's bringing a threat. He's trying to threaten. He's trying. He's trying. But if I stand, he's, going to, he's not going to be able to do anything. He's going, to, he's going to have to go away. He's going to have to go away. But you have to stand. You can't go running somewhere. You can't go crumbling. You've got to stand in your armor and wait for the time to pass. Wait for the storm to go over. You've got to. After you've done all, stand. Stand. After you've done all, you're going through some problems, don't know what to do, stand. 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 After you've done all, stand. Stand on that word. Say, I know God. I know God's alive and living well. I know that he, he's brought me through different situations. I know he's God. I know he's God. So I'm standing right here. I'm not moving. I'm standing here. And it's going to pass. It will pass. It will pass. But you got to stand. You have to. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to anybody out there? I'm telling you, you have to stand. Yeah, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have them. Because as I tell people at different times, this is not heaven. You're going to have problems. But you have to stand on that. You got to stand. And you got to stand with your armor on. So you're protected. And you want to know a lot of things that go on. And as we read through this, the, rest of these, the, the rest of this text, this text outline, a lot of times God got you and he got you well. But the only thing that's happening is you just see it. You see the threat of the situation. Man, come on, come on. Talk to me. You see the threat of the situation. The only thing you do is see the threat of it. Right? That's the only thing that God, if you're in God, that's the only thing he's going to let you see is the threat of it. You're not going to be consumed by it. You understand me? He's going to hold you intact still. You're only going to see the threat of it. But see, sometimes people get so, so scared because they're not standing in their armor and it gets them to move off their spot and they no longer stand where they were. They start to fall. They start to question. They start to doubt. They start to worry. And so they no longer stand. But see, he gets because they see the threat coming. But if you just stand in your armor and you say, I'm ready. Here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. It doesn't, you don't get consumed because you were ready. You were standing in the right way. But those who get consumed is because they get scared. It's like you tell somebody, say, you know, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Don't make a move because there, there's something out there right there that's trying to get you. Don't get out there. Like you ever seen a movie before say, stay right here, be quiet, be quiet. And then they say, oh, and they just run all out there. They run all out there and they get caught and, and, and get, and get tore up. I'm just telling you to stand. I'm telling you to stand. Don't go running all hysterical. Stand. Be clothed in the armor of God and stand. So let's read that. So let's finish reading it. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. 
and having on the blessed prayer of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you're not going to just do that when you get into a problem. See, you're not going to have that faith. See, you got to already have this stuff on. Stand in the full armor as it started at the beginning, having the full armor of God. You can't wait till you get a problem to do this. But I tell you what, though, after somebody been whooped up on a few times, don't learn. As I said, learning how to get comforted, you will learn that this is what you're going to have to do. And above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. She'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We got to stand. We got to stand and we got to stand in our full armor and we can't wait till the problem comes. We got to be ready. We got to have that armor on. Who got their armor on? Who has their armor on? If a situation would happen right now, are you going to crumble? Are you going to be defeated? Huh? You're going to be taken over? Do you got that armor on? Did you come with your armor? Better have that armor. Better have that armor on. See, I come to this realization. See, God keeps taking me up higher. And that's what you should desire for him to keep taking you up higher. Jesus keeps taking me up higher. And I come to the realization that it's not my will. It is his will. It's not my strength. It's his strength. See, I used to think that it's my house, how big and how strong I was. You know what I mean? If I go somewhere, you know what, man? You know what? I, I know I'm, I, got it, I, got it, I got it going on. I'm kind of diesel. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, just, I'm just going to just, but it's not about me. It's about him. And that's what we got to realize. If you're going to have that satisfaction, if you're going to have peace in mind, if you're going to have peace, it's about Jesus. It's not about you. And so you got to be, so you got to make sure that you're hiding in him, that you're resting in him, that you're covered in him. It's not about you because you are frail. You are flesh. There's things that could take you out like that. Like I said, a really big, strong man who's got muscles almost, you know, if, if you could have muscles, muscles in his toes even. Right? Strong man, let, him, let, let, a, let a piece of food go down the wrong way. And I'm not even saying a big chunk of chicken. I'm saying a little bitty pea. Let it go down the wrong way. And let's see how strong he is. It's not about how strong we are. It's how strong Jesus is. And I came to that realization. And, and I think that that's what we all need to come to. You know, it's not about us. Forget about you. Don't take yourself off of, the, uh, off of that stage. It's not about you, about how great you are, how strong you are, how determined you are. It's about, all, about how great Jesus is. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress it enough. And when you do that, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have some peace. I caught myself in the place. And I'm sitting there, you know what I mean? I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know, trying to, I, I felt uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable. And when I get, when I start to feel uncomfortable, sometimes I like, you know, I don't know if I try to, try to make myself feel, feel stronger whenever I feel uncomfortable. But I like, no, it's time to pray. Normally I would try to resort within myself. Try to resort within my own strength and my own ability. No, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. That's what it comes down to. So I'm telling you, there's comfort, but you have to learn how to be comforted. You have to learn how to be comforted. You do. You have to learn how to be comforted. Psalms, we're going to turn to Psalms 34. Verses 15 and 19. This should seem very familiar to some of you. And I want you to tell me how it should seem familiar to you in a little bit. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. So it must be something happening 
to the righteous for them to be crying. His ears are open to them, to their cry. His ears are open to their cry. Right? Some of you might say, well, you know, cry is just usually a word, like sometimes you read the book, cried so-and-so. That's just saying that they were, they were making a request, they were making a statement. Well, let's read verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. So what I'm trying to tell you, there's going to be problems that's going to be presented to you. They're going to come your way. It's going to seem like that, you know, that trouble's on the job, like they're going to try to fire you, or you're not going to graduate, or, you know, uh, uh, maybe there's troubles in your marriage or whatever. I'm telling you, it's, a, it's only a threat to you. You're not going to be consumed you understand me? You're not going to be consumed by it. Because it said, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Out of them all. You're not going to be consumed about it. So remember that. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Realize that he's going to be your comfort. Don't turn to... Don't turn to anyone else for being your comfort. Don't turn to the, to the blanket like Linus off of the peanuts. Don't turn to your blanket for your comfort. Don't turn to comfort food. We heard the word comfort food. Turn to comfort Jesus. And then you may see that somebody's ringing your doorbell. Ding, ding. Say, you know what? I got some mac and cheese for you. <laughs> Right? He's like, wow. You know, not only is he, yes, right. <laughs> the Lord brought my comfort and he even brought me some comfort food too. But turn to comfort Jesus. Comfort Jesus. And when you turn to him, he will direct you. Should lean not to thy own understandings, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct. He shall direct thy path. So you turn to him. And he might direct you in a certain way, but you turn to him because he's going to guide you where you need to go. I'm going to turn to Psalms 91 and 10. And this is awesome right here. So a lot of times people, you hear how people, they always talk about angels. And even people, like even worldly shows, they might put on angels. That might be the only thing that they have religious. They're talking about, well, the angels, the angels, right? And you hear people talking about angels. But the word of God, this is so phenomenal. God has you under control. If you're serving the Lord, if you're serving God, he has everything under control. Like I said, the only thing you're going to see is the threat, that's what you're going to see is the threat. But you, have, you, ever, you ever hear somebody talking about how people bluff? People bluff. Right? So the devil could be, the devil, only thing he got, you could think, it could be like a bluff or he could, he could really try, but it's not going to happen because God has it under control. So he could be bluffing to try to get you to move away from God or he could really, really try you but it's not going to work because God has it under control. So let's read on. There shall no evil befall thee. You're not going to be consumed by it. It's not going to take you over. There shall no evil befall thee. It's not going to happen to you. It's just not going to happen. It's going to try. But when you're serving God, he's not going to let it, he's not going to let it prevail over you. He's not going to let it prevail. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So, uh, so you're not going to be consumed. We know plagues consume people. They kill people, right? If a plague comes near your door, it's taking you out. So, it's not going to, so you're not going to be consumed. He's not going to allow something that potent to come in and, 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 and be that close to you. You're going to be able to see it. See the threat, but it's not going to be that close to you. It's not going to take you over. No, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For, li for listen to this. Isn't this, this is so awesome right here. Listen to this right here. Listen. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Woo! 
If you got your angel, I used to hear people say, make room for your angel. Was that you, first lady? Make room for your angel? All right? Huh? What, huh? Make room for your angel. Right? He says, so listen to this. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, let you all focus on that. It says to keep thee in all thy ways. So that means at work. That means in your relationships. That means in school. In all thy ways. In all thy ways. To keep you in all your ways. That means at home. That means in the marketplace when you're going grocery shopping. To keep you in all your ways. To keep you in all your ways. What can you, can you say that about anything else? Can, I mean, seriously, can you say that about anything else? You can't say that about anything. You may think that you have a really, really, really reliable car, and you get into your car, you got a meeting, and all of a sudden you get into your car, and, you can, and it's like going nowhere. It may look good, put on a stereo, that's about all it's going to do for you because it's not taking you anywhere right now. You can't say that about everything in life. But it says that, but it says that he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All thy ways. See, no wonder. See, the word of God goes together. No wonder where it said, I'll be blessed in the field. I'll be blessed in the city. I'll be blessed when I come in. I'll be blessed when I go out. He said, I'll keep thee in all. The angels going to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up. Listen to this. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Do you know that? Angels got you in your hands if you're there, if you're, if you're a child of God, right? Can you imagine right now? I got an angel having me in his hands. Right now. I, I'm in the hands of an angel right now. Say, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So if they don't hold you, listen. If you're not on God's side, it says, if, they, if they're not holding you, you're dashing your foot against the stone. It says, lest thou dash. So if that angel don't have charge of you, if God didn't give that angel charge over you to keep you in trouble situations, you're going to be hurt. You're going to be in a devil. You're going to be in a difficult, hard, and dangerous situation. Because it says, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. <laughs> God allows his angels to have you in their hand. Their hand. You understand me? So when you go through something next time, when you're going through something, just imagine that God has an angel that got you in their hand. In their hand. In their hand. Now that is awesome to think about because I'm telling you, that gives me something to think about whenever I'm going through a difficult situation. I got an angel that's in charge over me. That has me in his hand. You understand me? So that makes a world of difference. So that makes, a, that makes a lot. That's a lot of comfort right there for me. That's a lot of comfort. Even though I, even if I do go through a bad situation, you want to know something. I'm not going to be consumed in it. Everybody understanding me on that? I'm not going to be consumed in it. I'm still going to make it out. And if I, and so like, let's say for example, somebody do lose your job, right? God has a better job. God has a better job. There's been someone in this congregation that lost their job before. There's someone sitting right there that lost her job. It was all upset about it. But did God give you a better job? Did God give you a better job? <laughs> did God give you a better job? Did you lose your job and was all upset about it? Did he give you a better job with better pay? Yeah. Huh? So you didn't get consumed. You didn't get consumed. We're talking real here. We're talking real here. You didn't get consumed. And then whenever another situation had happened that you were recently thinking about, it didn't consume you. Did you make it through that real recent situation? You see what I mean? God gives his angels charge over thee. They hold you in their hand and you will not dash.
smash your foot against a stone. He's not going to allow harm to come your way. But you got to be a child of his. You got to be his child. You want to know why? You got to be a child because I can't go over to these people's houses over here and take their child and say, I got this one right here. They're going to be hanging out with me right now. My child. So if you're a child of God, he's going to protect you. So we're going to have the altar call. Anybody who needs the Holy Ghost, anybody who needs to be healed, anybody needs to be comforted, this is, this is the time. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you, First Lady. I forgot one of the outlines. And it's 2 Corinthians. As I told you before, you will go through a problem. You will have a problem. They cried. They cried. They cried. You think they were crying because it was, they were in happy times? You think David, when he said, they, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil? But look, 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 it didn't seem like he was shrinking from it, did he? See, look, David was clothed in the armor of the Lord. Listen, when he said, yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You understand me? I'm telling you. We can do it. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We are troubled on every side. Every side. Have you ever been troubled where you had trouble, you had so much trouble, and you, you felt overwhelmed even? It was so much trouble, troubled on every side. They said, we are troubled on every side. But listen to this. Yet not distressed. Not distressed about it. Right? You're having all kind of problems trying to bring you down, but you're not distressed over it. Why are you not distressed over it? Because I got Jesus. I got Jesus. He's comforting me. I got that angel who has me in the palm of his hand. We are perplexed. We're confused. We're dumbfounded. Don't know what's going on. But not in despair. We're not feeling hopeless. We're not feeling hopeless. We're not feeling helpless because we got Jesus. We got Jesus. That's why we can go through and not feel hopeless, not feel helpless, not feel like we're ready to throw in the towel because we have, we have a God, we have Jesus that is able to comfort us, right? We have Jesus. Look at what it said in Jude. Now unto him. <laughs> Woo! Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Unto the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen. <laughs> Woo! That's the kind of God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Now we will actually have that altar call now. Thank the Lord.